we left Bozeman about 22 hours ago, and we still got a long ways to go. We are driving to Watson Lake Yukon Territory and then dropping back down into British Columbia. Since I was about 12, 13, I dreamed about mountain caribou. And my wife and I got to talking about it, and she said, you know what? It's really been that one dream bucket list hunt you have. You should go do that. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to fulfill a 40 some year dream. I have no idea how it'll work out. I know some people will say it's a guided hunt and that you do all self-guided stuff. And we do. Other than this one, you can't do mountain caribou. You can do other caribou without a guide, but not mountain caribou. So, Dustin Rowe, who's been on our podcast before, invited me to come up and do a caribou hunt, mountain caribou hunt. When you get to be a certain age, you realize that you either dream about tomorrow or you live today. And I'm not going to let the talk about mountain caribou hunting be one of those, gee, I wish I would have done that someday thing. So, and who knows? The other part is, Dustin said, hey, while you're here, you may as well shoot a moose. If I don't shoot a moose, it's no big deal, but don't get me wrong. If there's a really nice moose there, and he'd be a, a, sensu, a real sensuous moose. Sensuous being, since you was here, you ought to shoot that too. He's gonna get 20 liters. No sniveling allowed. If you come this far and you're going to snivel about the price of gas, you can't afford to come here to start with. When I first signed up for this hunt two years ago, there was a friend who thought he'd be able to do it. So I booked it for me and him for a two-on-one hunt. Well then this winter, when he got there in his calendar, he's like, I can't be gone for 16 days, which would have been all the travel plus the hunt. So he had to back out, and uh, Dustin, the outfitter, had to find a replacement for the slot. So if you see somebody on camera who you've never seen before and has not been part of our platform, that's how it ended up that way. Hopefully by the time we're all done in 10 days, this guy and I will be considered friends. I hope so. That's always a fun part of hunting. Get to know people. Mama bear and baby bear. thought I saw them when we came around the corner, but I thought, ah, oh, no, those couldn't be bears standing right on the <laughs> shoulder of the road. <laughs> well, we are about 40 minutes away from where we're going to camp tonight. And then tomorrow, we're going to fly into our real camp. Google Maps said it was 29 hours and something of windshield time. I think we're closer to 30, almost 32. Well, they got quite a few rigs here. Holy cow. Here we are. Go find out what's going on. We found <laughs> the right place? Yes, All we right. did. The cabin is that's right as you come in that's okay. where you guys will stay okay um if you just want to pull over there to unload we've got coffee that just yeah, got brewed we've, and we've had i've had much. more coffee than i need for a year <laughs> or two so. yeah yeah yep. i'm guessing you're probably going to take as much as, as, much as you can we have a freezer and three perfect and okay so whatever we can we'll, we'll do it awesome okay Well, when you can't fly out to hunt, you may as well pitch in with the meat cutting, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm smiling even though I'm not hunting today because I'm doing the next best thing, taking care of meat. We are ready. Heading to the place where the float plane the beaver's gonna fly us in we lost a day due to weather yesterday so 
our 10 day hunt is a 9 day hunt. Fingers crossed when we get there that it stops raining and we can fly today. I don't know if a beaver can carry a smile this big. <laughs> the smile is so big it might put us overweight. As my friend Walt would have said, got a smile like a ripple on a slop pail. Not exactly sure what that meant, but he said it means from side to side. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Rachel. I'm going to be your driver today. All right. Okay. Jump off the front. <laughs> Running leap. How's it going? Oh, oh. How are you? How are you? James. James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Marcus. I'm Marcus. James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Marcus. Marcus. Nice to meet you. can't hunt until six hours after you've flown and we just got here about an hour ago and we're trying to stay out of everybody's way these three came in here july 14th and it is now september 26th so they've been at it a long time they're uh packing up everything and getting the horses ready and the idea is we're going to go around these mountains to the next camp and hunt out of that camp. So uh, we have a long horse ride ahead of us is what I'm told. And everybody laughed when I said I haven't ridden a horse for quite a while. And they said, well, you'll be sore. That's all right. Let's see if I can get my bum left knee. What's the horse's name again? Jabs. 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 <laughs> All right. I realized I was pointing back this way. Are you a full-fledged cowboy now? No. No? Not even a good start at it. <laughs> now you just have a really big llama. Yeah.
It's too dark to see anything, <laughs> but we just got to camp. Right. And we're unloading all of our stuff. I have no idea how many miles we went or how long it was, but I know I used muscles I've never used before. And I would bet tomorrow morning I'm going to know it even more. So, trying to get everything off the horses and wheels and get organized before it gets any darker. That is day one. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. See the smile? You're going to see the smile. Dynamite. You're going to see this for... Till I leave. It's already been... Uh, a success. Guaranteed success already. Uh oh. So, tune in tomorrow. We're going to get serious about the hunting, I believe. That's a plan, anyhow.